And welcome to Now You Know Sports. I'm Joe Florio, giant, joined by Mike Galtieri. It's his first show. Mike, we're happy to have you aboard. Joe, a pleasure. Happy to be part of the Now You Know Sports team. Great. All right, so Mike, I've been very happy with what I've seen from this D.C. football team. But what do you think down the road in terms of a record and a bowl? Well, the, Joe, the team's got off to a great start. Uh, but, uh, you know, and with some great big wins early on. But down the stretch, and especially the second half of the year, there's going to be a lot of difficult matchups. You travel to Notre Dame, at Virginia Tech, uh, at Maryland, and some home matchups against Florida State and Miami. A very difficult schedule. I like this team, and I like the way it shapes up, though, with Matt Ryan leading and a new coach rejuvenating the offense, led by offensive coordinator Steve Logan. And this team definitely, even with the difficult matchups, I give it a 10-2 and record through 2007 and going to the ACC championship game. You know, Mike, I, I agree with you. This team will make the ACC championship game, but it's not so much that the team's so strong. And you talked about the offense, of course, led by Matt Ryan, this new energy co coming from Coach Jagosinski. I just think it's how weak the conference is. And it really says a lot about how the ACC has been in a down couple of years. And you look at early embarrassing losses, frankly, for uh, Miami team against Oklahoma, Virginia Tech getting blown out by LSU in week two on national champ. Uh, East Carolina um, beat North Carolina. Exactly. I mean, wow. these are things you don't want to see from the conference, but I think in a down year, D.C.'s on the uh, uh, rising up, looking for all the good things, and I say ACC championship game, and this game, team will get to the Orange Bowl. Yeah, some big predictions. I agree with that as well. Well, Tom O'Brien came back to the Heights a couple weeks ago, and an NC State team led. Uh, uh, you know, I got the crowd was a little negative. The students were negative, Tom O'Brien. Rightfully so. They had a reason to be negative. But uh, you also have to remember, BC super fans. This guy was the winningest coach at the Heights. He led the team back from uh, in, in the mid '90s, uh, in which wasn't a great time for the program, and brought them to a respectable, very respectable position where they consistently uh, eight and three records, eight and four, nine and three records uh, throughout these years. You have to credit him. For that, and I think we, we really should have got more of an applause here back at the Heights, uh, Joe. What do you, what Mike, do you I was that? at that game on Sunday, and I was one of those fans booing him coming out. And I mean, it's just the manner in which he left. I mean, he lied to his players. He lied to the BC community. He lied to his players? What are you, what are you lying Absolutely. about? Absolutely. The way he went out the door, I mean, just very frustrating to me as a fan. And what, you know, what I hated most about Tom O'Brien was his excuses. I mean, he said at BC you can only win 9 to 10 games. And yeah. I don't want my head coach making excuses. Definitely. Je you're right about that. Jeff Jenkins, he's brought a new life to the program. It's a breath of fresh air. We're happy to have air. him. And, you know, it's a great we'll welcome Tom O'Brien to NC State. Time All right. Time. So, uh, Mike, I know one of the new changes for this season was the team's uniforms. I'm a big fan of them, but I know you're not too happy with them. You know, the uniforms, the logo on the shoulder pads, I mean, <laughs> it looks like the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I went, these, this BC college football, are we the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't think so. I don't think we want to be after the way they played in week uh. one to, against uh, Green Bay. But, uh, you know, so uh, I, I don't like them. I, I, the, le the numbers are good. The italicized numbers still I haven't warmed up I, to I as agree well. With that. But, uh, you know, I'll live with them as long as we keep on winning. But I'm still a fan of the old uniforms. <laughs> But I love what the athletic department's doing. I mean, in terms of basketball season, we saw the gold jerseys last year. Those are cool. Big fan of that. Those are cool. But this year, the maroon, the gold pants with the stripes. I mean, it's a return to, you know, glory. There's too many pants. Dude, what are you wearing, gold or white? <laughs> I mean, each week. I agree. The maroon uniform. with the white pants, but you have to say, against that Georgia Tech game, the all white jersey's great. <laughs> Big well, thumbs up to Gene DiFilippo okay, on that. Okay, well, there you go. Before we uh, wrap up, we like to uh, go to the mailbag. I'd like to remind everybody the email address for now you know is now you know sports at gmail.com. We love to hear your emails and your thoughts on the BC football program. Now, one email we got last week uh, Guys, BC is off to a strong start and well on their way to hopefully their first BCS bowl game. In years past, however, the team has always had at least one surprising loss in the season. Which team do you think will give BC the biggest challenge? Or do you think the annual hiccup game that was a staple of the O'Brien regime is gone and now that Jeff Jagosinski is the new coach? That's from Tim Messina in Edmonds Hall. Now, uh, I don't know about you, Joe, but uh, I, I still, even with the hiccups, and I, 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 there was always one in Tom O'Brien's uh, era that prevented them from getting over the hump. I still think that will be the case with the difficult schedule this year. I look at November 10th against Maryland as that game where as a typical trap game, and I gotta be honest, yeah, Maryland having a pretty good year thus far. 
could be a possible hiccup for the Eagles down the stretch, especially with uh, Florida State and Notre Dame and Virginia Tech right before that and Clemson and Miami after that. It's kind of a trap game. I see that as a possible hiccup date. Well, Tim, obviously you're referring to games in 2004 with the loss to Syracuse, the loss to UNC the next year, and the loss to NC State. But I honestly don't see a hiccup game because the end of the schedule is so brutal that, frankly, if BC loses any of those games, I'm all right with that. So I mean, if they lose one of those games, they're going to be hard-fought games. And I really have confidence in this offense and that that's not going to be the case this year. You really are drinking this new Kool-Aid here of Jeff Zagazinski <laughs> in the new era. I still don't get too carried away yet here. All at right. Lights. Well, that does it for sports. Mike, thank you for joining us. Great first show. Pleasure. And we ask you to join us next week. And remember, now you know. Go Eagles.